very happy that we, as we gather here in Frankfurt, uh, to celebrate women and their contribution to society. And I also want to honor uh, women who are in countries around the world who are still working to achieve freedom and equality. We also have the privilege this year of celebrating the centennial of a great organization, the Girl Scouts. Let's first uh, look at what women have achieved so far, and it's quite a bit, I think. Um, today, women can lead independent lives, at least in our part of the world. They can choose to be whatever or whoever they want to be. So women have come a far way, and you might get the impression maybe the battles have been fought already. Do we still need an International Women's Day? Well, I think the question is certainly interesting insofar as the United States is the only advanced industrial country that does not celebrate International Women's Day. It was originally started, uh, it goes back to about 1908, when a group of women textile workers in the United States were attempting to form a union. And in the early 1900s, people were already scared to death that there was going to be a communist takeover of the world because of the Bolshevik Revolution, although that didn't really happen until 1917. And then Clara Zetkin and a number of European socialist women got involved and decided to internationalize the event instead of having it just being an American kind of holiday. What we celebrate instead is Women's History Month. Do we have cause? to try to introduce International Women's Day. Well, we certainly should try to introduce a National Women's Day. The truth Day. of the matter is we have not attained leadership positions at the level of what we call critical mass, 30% in a single field. On average, women make up about 18% of the American leaders. So I would say not only do we need an International Women's Day and a National Women's Day, we need the decade of American women. Let's talk about the glass ceiling, this um, unbreachable barrier that um, yeah, helps to keep women down, uh, suppresses that they go up to and reach upper rank, uh, rungs. Um, what are the main obstacles uh, nowadays? Certainly, just the nature of American society. We do not have the infrastructure that gives us the time and the energy to participate actively and without interruption in a lot of the activities that men take for granted and use not necessarily as formal qualifications, but as informal qualifications for leadership positions. Do we have the adequate daycare facilities that we need in order to work full-time jobs? Do we even have paid maternity leave? We get 12 weeks of unpaid leave. So there's a whole lot of stuff even before we get to the world of work that slows <coughs> us down. The U.S. government is still a man's world. 27 states never had a female governor. In the House of Representatives, there are 73 women in 435 seats. Why have, so, in so many states, women not been elected, for example, to become governors? We, the cards are stacked against us. The structures, the processes are stacked against us. Let's just think of this absolutely absurd, super chaotic, hyper-expensive, mud-slinging primary and caucus election season. Yes. <laughs> How many women with children could take six months off to hop back and forth across 50 states? Or let's think about which states first get to pick the candidates. Iowa and New Hampshire comprise together less than 1% of the total population. If we add Nevada and South Carolina, which come next in the caucus race, these states are disproportionately white, rural, older. They are also more fundamentalist in their religious orientations. These are not women-friendly states. 
So why do we let these four states go first? People who live out in Iowa on a farm, they don't understand half the problems of the country because they don't live with them every day. So why don't we just have a national primary day where we all vote on the same day, where it's one person, one vote. And that way, women would have more chances. Do we need more serious intervention um, to support women? Um, I'm talking about quotas. An OACD study shows that despite all recent efforts, women still are underrepresented. Uh, uh, on average, uh, women occupy just 10% of company boardrooms. Mm -hmm. And if we keep up this pace, the current pace, it will take 40 more years to fix this imbalance. Mm -hmm. Would that be a, a good idea in your view? I do believe in the use of quotas. We can't use them in America because quotas have a very special legal definition. <coughs> but we could use the German term Quotierung, all right? Sort of setting goals, timetable. What we can do is go back to affirmative action and follow up on affirmative action and make sure that there are at least 30% women or no sex should have less than 30% in any hiring pool. She says um, affirmative action actually um, is uh, the contrary of equal treatment. It's an insult. Um, it's a discrimination. Um, so how, how do you, would you react to this? It's, I do not think that quotas <coughs> hurt me one bit. And this is a lesson for you young women. They throw that label out there. Oh, everybody's going to think you're a quota girl. I don't care what you call me, but I want you to open that door, and I want you to let me walk through, and I will prove to you what I can do. People who are afraid of the competition are going to tell you, ooh, you don't want to be an, a, a quota frau. You want to be whatever it takes to walk through that door, and then you turn around with your elbow, girl, and you hold that door open for the person behind you. <laughs>